All right, you know what it is. This one's going to be about FBG Duck's murder trial coming up. I will be covering FBG Duck's murder trial. So I'm letting you know. That's what this is about. So this is about the uh, FBG Duck versus the L. Rukins. All right? FBG Duck versus the L. Rukins. Sit back, enjoy the ride, man. All right? Hey! All right, Unique Mac Audio, man. This one is about that FBG Ducks murder trial and the, uh, uh, versus the L. Rukins. Now, let me clarify this for the rap bastards listening, flip-flop wearing in public, trolls. Now, I'm not comparing their actions. I'm not comparing their actions on the street to each other, Period. So let's get that straight. I'm just comparing how the feds work to bring down a black organization in the United States of America. That's what this is about. Now, FBG duck trial, nowadays they got all kinds of video surveillances and all these things going on. So they catch everything on video, but there's no audio. So they don't know what's happening. So they have to go to the underlings, to the co-defendants, to find out what was taking place in the video. So they offer them what they call sweet deals. Now, a sweet deal is, you know, the feds come at you and they say, look, we don't want you. We want the shooter. We don't want you. We want Jeff Ford, you know? We don't want you. We want Unique. You know what I mean? That's how they break the men, by letting them know that you could sacrifice him for you, you know? Either he get life or you get life, you know? You go to trial, we're going to blow you out the water because we got a 98% conviction rate because everybody works with us because when we come we come with everything is what they say now fbg duck right they got them getting in cars at the you know at the, at, at the apartment complex get, you know they got phone calls text messages they got all this new technology they had none of that back during the arukin so they had to deal with an actual foot soldier rat bastard okay so now once they get somebody inside the organization to flip they tell them everything these are the methods that they use like in the l rukin's case the chief witness uh i think his name was davis he wound up getting nine years in federal prison and his co-defendants that you know he put the pieces for and testified against wound up getting 80 years <laughs> from 9 to 80. You see how they do? And even though he got, even though he got nine years, they also gave him $10,000 to make sure when he go to prison, he's penitentiary rich because he can buy all the stamps he wants. <laughs> you know what I mean? And all the cigarettes he wants. So the man got $10,000 and nine years to flip on his co-defendants to get them 80 years. Now, that's the way that work out. Then they also give them gifts. Let me tell you about the L. Rukins. If you want to know more about the L. Rukins, put it in the comments, because I was with everybody, you know, and that's, and that's why, you know, the rat bastards hate me, because I was literally with everyone. Now, I was with Band 2 from the L. Rukins in Lewisburg. Bantu had like a skin condition for those of y'all that was in Lewisburg so you remember who he is because he didn't talk to everybody because he hated rats. He hated, hated, hated rat bastards. You know what I mean? And that's all he talked about was the rats that got him in there. And without the rats, they would never get a conviction. 
you know, they would never, let me say it again, they would never get a conviction without the rats, you know. In my case, I wouldn't have got a day in jail. I've never been arrested for cocaine uh, distribution in my life, and they used the rat to say that I gave him the drugs and he put it in the car, and that was transported to my brother down in Virginia and, you know, my other alleged underlings in Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Charlotte, you know, Greensboro, you, you know, I mean, these are all the states, you know, that they said I was sending my drugs to. And by putting it under a CCE, which is the kissing cousin to a RICO, they're allowed to hold me responsible, is what they tell the jury, for anything and anyone that touches or handles my drugs, I'm responsible for whether I know them or not. So could you imagine, because my lawyer even used this terminology and the judge used it in another case. Could you imagine Arm and Hammer baking soda? We all use baking soda to cook cocaine. So imagine Arm and Hammer baking soda being our co-defendants, because we bought the baking soda from them. We cooked up the coke. You understand? They didn't know you know, what we was doing with the coke when we done with it, but they knew we was using baking soda to cook cocaine, and they did a mass production of baking soda to get it on the street to supply the demand. When they rolled up in one of my houses, everything is in my transcript. When they rolled up in one of my houses, I had like maybe 80-something boxes of baking soda under the kitchen cupboard because I like to use a fresh box every time. I cook up a fresh batch, you know, to make sure it came back powerful and potent. None of this is to brag, so you rap bastards, I'm just letting them know the facts of how the street work. And by me being on the street using 80 boxes of baking soda to make millions of dollars, I couldn't find myself to turn against my comrades and bring them in because... I slipped and I fell on that banana that popped out the tailpipe, you know? So now I got to wear that. But nowadays, everybody feel that it's all man for themselves, and that's where the feds come in like they did with Davis in the L. Rukin's case and gave him 10 grand to testify and nine years when they gave his co-defendants nothing and 80 years. Figure that out, you know? So that's how that worked. Now, so you understand... The government, when they want a conviction that bad, this is what they do. In the L. Rukin's case, the DA, I'm going to tell you about that DA. You know, that's the district attorney. That's the prosecutor. That's the government. That's the one trying to prosecute us and take our freedom and our life and liberty away from us for decades and even the rest of our lives. Now, the DA in that case... He had one of his paralegals, a female, was having sex with one of the co-defendants, screwing his brains out in order to get him to testify against the El Rukins and bring them down. So the DA's, you know, paralegal was having sex with one of the co-defendants. Figure that out. They never told that to the jury. They gave, they allowed the other co-defendants, you know, girlfriends to come up and see them and gave them conjugal visits, you know, in, you know, the Chicago Detention Center, you know, supervised, you know, which is really unsupervised because they let them come in, see their girl because it was glass visits at the jail, but they let them have personal visits a couple of times a month. They came in, the girls came up and they brought heroin and, you know, other things that they needed and they gave it to them in the visiting hall. They swallowed it or they keisted it, however they brought it in. They brought it back and they treated the other rat bastards, you know, showing them that this is what you get when you work with the government. You get to screw your girl and you get to get the drugs. So you need to be a rat like me and flip. This is what they're telling the other men amongst them. So now they gave out gifts, you know. So now here we go. They're giving out 10 grand. They're giving out nine years instead of 80, 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Pay attention to what I'm saying now. They letting them have sex with the with the paralegal. They letting them have sex with their girlfriends. They letting them bring Heron in all this to get a conviction. But none of this was ever mentioned to the jury. That's how they work. Because by all means, all they want is a conviction. They don't care if you're innocent or guilty. You know how they say every man is presumed innocent until proven guilty? Well, no, it don't work like that. In the Fed's mind, once we put this on paper, you're guilty, period. And we got to prove to the jury you're guilty by any means. If that means letting, you know, the paralegal have sex, letting them bring in drugs or whatever, whatever. Same thing happening right now with, you know, FBG Ducks murder trial. You know, they got co-defendants that they're giving these sweet deals to. But what they do now is because... You know, let me break this down. I'm not going to make this video too long because I'm trying to shorten my videos because I don't know if y'all really enjoying the ride or not. You know what I mean? So if you're enjoying the ride, put it in the comment and I'll keep the videos long. But I, you know, I was giving y'all 30 minutes. Now I'm going to give you whatever I feel like, you know, no disrespect. But, you know, you know, we got the trolls and rat bastards, you know, that be out there popping crap. And we definitely can't forget about the flip-flop wearing in public clowns, you know. I don't trust any man, no disrespect, that wears flip-flops in public because that means that you're putting your trust into, you know, the police system, that it's safe outside, you know. Regardless what you do outside, you feel that now the police got to protect you and they're going to protect you so you can wear flip-flops because it's a safe world, even though you're in the criminal world. That's why I say don't get involved. Don't get off the porch and don't break the law because if you do break the law, there's rules to this. Once you wind up in that penitentiary, even if they give you eight years and ten grand for snitching like they did Davis in the El Rukin case, you're still going to wind up amongst the men that follow these rules and principles. So don't think you got over, period. Remember that. Now, so let me finish. So we got, you know, them doing all this now in the FBG duck case. You know, they put in the jury instructions now in 2023 that some of the witnesses was paid. You know, some of them got gifts. Some of them got that. And then they tell the jury, you know, to take their testimony, you know, in so many words with a grain of salt. So if you take their testimony with a grain of salt, why are you even interjecting their testimony. But that's just to poison the jury's mind. So in other words, if you tell the jury, you know, this is the type of crap they do at, at, at the, you know, at a trial. Because I sat in trial. So you got a person that comes in and do to say, oh, he made me kill him. You know what I mean? Because he threatened to kill my girlfriend. And they'd be like, uh, objection. Uh, I strike that. There's no w evidence to that. Then they'll tell the jury, ignore the fact that he just said that he was forced to kill or his man was going to kill his girlfriend. So the jury got that in their mind. How are they going to forget that in their mind that now the dude want to kill an innocent female to, you know what I mean, to stop him from testifying? You know, but they say strike that from the record and ignore that. How do you ignore something like that? But the bottom line is the government done slipped it in and they got it in there. So that's how they do that. Real dirty, 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 dirty game. You know what I mean? So now, the L. Rukins, you know, because they're a real fascinated, you know, group. So the L. Rukins was trying to help and build up the community in Chicago. And they got uh, Libya to offer them, you know, I think a million dollars or something like that, you know. And um, they was trying to, you know, buy rocket launches and things of that nature, you know, to protect themselves. Because, you know, how they say right now they're fighting for the Second Amendment gun rights. So if a European got that, it wouldn't be a problem. You know what I mean? So y'all put in the comments. I know you rat bastards got something to say about it because you love to defend, you know the government, you know, because basically you are the government, you know. But follow the law. Don't break the law is what I'm pushing. But if you choose to break the law, know that there's rules to breaking the law. 
And that means you don't tell on your comrade. Just like it say in the Bible, want for your brothers, you want for yourself. You wouldn't want your brother to testify against you, so you shouldn't testify against your brother. Now, being that Libya was trying to help, and they was giving them money. Libya was giving them money to help build up the structure of the community. That's what the money was for. But the government wound up getting one of their co-defendants, Davis, to flip and twist the story around to make it fit the government's theory that it was a terroristic plot to get these rocket launchers to bring harm amongst the people of Chicago. But when Brother Davis first got caught, he spoke the truth what the money and the meeting with Libya was all about. And he wouldn't testify. And then his girl got into something and now to prevent his girl from going to jail, he agreed to flip and he winds up, you know what I mean, working with the government and the government tells you exactly what's going on. Like if y'all saw the movie yesterday, Power Book 4, Power Book 4, where the black female police sat there and showed the girl that Tommy helped get out the apartment when the dude got killed in the apartment, you know, um, the escort, when she showed him the picture and she said, well, I didn't see, you know, the dude kill him, you know, but he was at the apartment that night. They said, we can't give you a deal unless you saw him kill him, you know? So then, of course, he said, yeah, 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 I saw him kill him because she wanted a deal. Then they said, okay, but they also wanted Tommy. So they said, do you see anyone she, anyone else you know? She knew Tommy because Tommy the one got her out and she wasn't trying to turn Tommy in. So she said, no, I see no one else. Then the prosecutor tapped on Tommy's picture and say, you sure you don't see anyone else? And of course, now to get that deal, to get her freedom, she lied and said, you know, yeah, he was there too. So now they done threw Tommy in it. But that's how the government works, because all they want is a conviction. So that's called coercion. You know, when you coerce someone into doing something, you know, um, into lying. So that's what they did with that. So now Davis sat there and he twisted his plot up to make the El Rukas look like a terror organization when these men, let me show you this so you understand. When these men were sitting there, you know, this, you know, I'm sitting in the way of Brother Jeff Ford, so let me get out the way. Let me get out the way. You know what I mean? So this is where we at, you know. When they rolled up on, you know, their location, they rolled up on their location while they was in prayer. While they was in prayer. You know, I'm not going to get into what or who the El Rukins was, but I know that they was trying to better their community. And at the same time, you got all kinds of problems going on in the community, you know. So, you know, but I'm just comparing only the trials that they're both getting ready to, uh, you know, that the FBG duck uh, alleged killers is getting ready to face. That's all I'm talking about right now. So y'all fully understand. All right. So now they allow the witnesses to say anything. When they pick them up, they give them, they give them a statement already written out and say, okay, this is what we need you to say, and we need you to sign this. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's why you don't even talk to them people. And if you do, you definitely don't sign nothing. You know what I mean? But, you know, I refuse to even talk to my prosecutor during the time of my trial. I fired a couple of my lawyers for even mentioning my prosecutor offered me a deal. There is no deal, because when they offer a deal, they expect you to testify and become a rat bastard. And my mama never raised no rat bastard. So let's get that straight, you know? And I chose to be on the street. I slipped on the banana out the tailpipe and hit my head and wound up in cuffs and in federal custody. So it's now it's up to me to get me out. No one owes me bail money. No one owes me anything. So I can't use any excuse that no one gave me bail money. No one gave me this. That's why I told. This one screwed my girlfriend. That's why I told. They threatened my mother. That's why I told. No, they threatened my mom. They did all that. And the homie screwed my girlfriends. But never would I bring them in, even though they did a cowardly act. You know? 
But that's just the way it is on the street, because everything goes. Just like you rat bastards say, how do, how do they say it? I, I try to even forget you clowns. But the, the, the rat bastards say, uh, it's something they, they say, man. It's just hard to remember this crap, you know? Um, but, but, but anyway, you know, let me show you another picture of Jeff Ford, because I got my little thing organized real quick, you know what I mean? Let's take the brother Duck down and, you know, this is the man that they wanted, you know. That's who they wanted. So by any means, they want him. He was connected to politicians in Washington, and he even got the government to give him, like, a million dollars. I think with taxes out, whatever it was, but it came out to be, like, a total of nine, uh, uh, over $900,000, you know, like 900370 or something like that. But back in those days, you know, a million dollars is considered as the government giving, you know, uh, uh, the blood to the Crips or old block or, you know, whoever, or the GDs of today, $8 million, you know, because they was trying to clean up the community. So that's what was going on. Now, you know, all types of, you know, bad rumors and statements get passed around the courtroom by the government. Now, let me speed this up and bring this to a close. I hope y'all kept up with the ride. You know what I mean? I hope y'all kept up with the ride. Now, the prosecutor in the L. Rufkin's case that brought down my brother Ban too, right? The prosecutor, for him allowing his paralegal to have sex, allowing the, you know, the girlfriends to bring in drugs, giving them conjugal visits, paying them money, br you know, bringing them cartons of cigarettes, and giving them everything they couldn't have to keep them comfortable so that they would continue to be the rat bastards that they are, you know? Now, it came out because, uh, 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 I'm going to save this, I'm going to save this for when I do the whole El Rukin story. I think y'all might want to know the whole El Rukin story. But I'm going to give you the short version. I'm not going to tell you how it played out. But I got all this firsthand because, like I said, I was with the men of honor. Men of honor. And morals and principles of my time, you know. And, you know, so they got the prosecutor now. All right, I'm going to give it to you. They, they, they got the prosecutor in Washington, D.C., and another prosecutor said, man, I saw the thing came up where one of the, you know, one of your key witnesses got a dirty urine. That's going to look bad for you, you know, when the trial come up that he's in the prison in your custody and he's getting high off of heroin and he's your key witness. They're going to say, how did they get it, that they gave it to you, whatever, whatever. And dude tried to hide that document with the dirty urine from you know, the defense, you know, from the El Rukins, which he did. But the paperwork came out after the fact. So now that was enough to go back in to show that he would testify under the influence and the government knew he was high because, you know, they the ones that took the, the, the urine test and it came back dirty with him and so on and so on. And they still allowed him to go up there and testify and didn't give us these documents to cross-examine him so that we could show my client's innocence that he, you know, had a motive to lie because he was high or he could have been hallucinating because he was high. That's how that played out. So when that happened now, the dude knew, the prosecutor knew his time was limited. He knew his time was limited, so the prosecutor, listen to this now, the prosecutor in the L. Rukin's case went on the run. He went on the run to the West Coast where he held up in a hotel and when he got to the hotel, because he knew his whole career was coming down, because he broke every law and violated every constitution in the book to bring down their Rukins, because he wanted them off the streets that bad. But the courts have a saying that they'll rather, um, they'll rather one innocent man, you know, go free, than for you to lock up a hundred guilty men. You understand? They'd rather one innocent man to go free than to lie. I mean, they'd rather a hundred, my bag, I said it wrong. They'd rather a hundred guilty men to go free than to lock up one innocent man. That's how it goes. They'd rather a hundred innocent, a hundred guilty men to go free than to lock up one innocent man. I think the prosecutor's name was Bill Hogan. 
Because I remember going through the paperwork with a uh, thing, you know what I mean? Correct me if I'm wrong, you know? But Bill Hogan, I think name, I'm almost sure that was it. Hogan was his last name. Because I saw Bantu's paperwork of Bantu, the one that taught me about, you know, rat bastards and how to go back in with newly discovered evidence. And they are... Uh, Hogan went out west and went in a hotel and couldn't deal with the pressure of, you know... Coming down, because he was like the wonder boy for bringing him down like Giuliani was for the mafia. He couldn't deal with falling from grace for being the wonder boy for locking up the El Rukins to be known as the one that cheated, got caught, and looking at possible jail time for keeping and concealing documents, what they call exculpatory evidence that the defense could have used to cross-examine the witness to free him. You see, I'll break the law down for you. That's why the cash app on the screen, you know? But now, so you fully understand, right? They came, and Bill Hogan wound up, I think he shot himself in the head. He committed suicide because he didn't want to fall from grace. That's what this dirty rat bastard did. You know what I mean? And I call him that because... He cheated and lied in order to get a conviction of innocent citizens, regardless what color, race, or creed they are. His secretary was having sex with one of the government informants, putting a good na-na on him to keep everything moving proper to make sure he get on the stand. That's how you want a conviction, Mr. Government? But that's what they did. You know, so now we got, you know, let's go back to, you know, uh, brother uh, FBG Duck. Now we got his trial coming up. Now, back then, they didn't put it in the jury instruction to let anyone know that they was paying the witnesses. Whether it was in cash, like they gave Davis 10000 in nine years, or whether it was with their freedom. Nobody knew none of this during my day. But after so many people, uh, prosecutors got busted for doing that, now they changed it and they have to put it in the jury instructions that they pay some witnesses. They, you, you know what I mean? Whether it's uh, physical gifts, whether it's cash, or whether it's their freedom or their life and liberty, which is equivalent to their freedom. That's the way that works, right? So now in FBG Duck's murder trial, they put it in there, but they also say, you know, take that with a grain of salt. If you want us to take it with a grain of salt, why even put it in the plate? You see what I'm saying? Rat bastards. But that's the way this works. So pay attention. I'm going to be doing the coverage of the FBG duck trial to break it down from a re real legal gangster perspective on how it's playing out so you don't have to be confused trying to keep up with the local news. All right? Now, we've been on here long enough. Cop the book of Roar in Harlem at auroraharlem.com. Follow me on Instagram at Unique Maker Audio. It's on the screen. And donate to the Cash App. Remember, there's no number one in my last name. It's H-A-L-L, -L, not H-A number one, L-A-R-H-A-L number one. None of that. And go a step further and hit the logo to make sure it say it was created in 2020. But this is where we at. It was a pleasure giving you all this information. And I look forward to covering the FBG Duck trial. So right now, y'all sit back and enjoy the outro. I cheers, 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 the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime. The crime. Hey. Fresh out the key.
10 of 26 He back on the strip, getting back in the mix What he mentions a gift, you stand up 10 toes down And I suggest you pay attention to this Take a little gully posse and put it in Harlem He cut from the bottom, came up from the bottom Drop the book, you should go and get it An Instagram page and a YouTube, you could go and visit Then you could consider yourself LinkedIn Sit front row and get juice from a kingpin How he went through it so you ain't gotta go do it The not pay attention would be stupid Talking about a man that probably put your grandfather on Probably the reason that him and your grams got along A man that generated millions on the block Did his time, never squilling to the cops make an audio Get it live like two G's in the night. Yeah. Drop top beamer so shine. Yeah. I let shorty go, she was wine. Treat her like my past, she behind me. Spin a couple bands on the dapper den. You be back again, getting green like a Packers fan. No cap, this a raw and uptown. Baby horn uptown, Dominican bust down. Now we on the positive, you we got a lot to give. Now you trying to stop the kids from being inoperative. So take heed, homie, lend the air. He started in uptown, he gon' finish dead. But now it ain't about selling drugs, buying cars. It's about buying property to make the community yard. So we can give back to the youth, them. They the truth them and bless up to all the rude men. Yeah.